Yeah. Today uh, I was doing some walking meditation earlier, and uh, very good discovery. <laughs> I mean, I noticed uh, well just moving, feeling, uh, focusing on gross sensation, the cold cement, cold cement, cold cement, and then it goes back to a natural temperature. That was enough to keep uh, quite good, quite easily the concentration. Mm -hmm. But then I noticed that if I engage other muscles of my body, for example, walking like this, mm -hmm. all the way, or like this, or like that, because mm -hmm. of the pain arising from these muscles uh, getting tired, is also helping a lot because it's, sim it's sim similar to when I do the sitting meditation and the pain comes after 30 minutes, mm -hmm. then kind of uh, the mind wants, needs to stay a bit more alert. Yeah. So before I start practicing this way and it's not the right way, I, I just want, felt like sharing. Well, meditation is considered to be a, a sacred uh, activity. So you want to make it look uh, respectable. So you, normally people would try to be uh, humble in the activity, in walking. You know, be reserved, not, not sort of uh, being uh, catching attention. Yes, yeah, so not casual. You have to it's consider something sacred, something that you should uh, be reserved and concentrate on your mind. You know. If you want to do exercise, you can do it at some other time. You can do yoga or anything, but. When, if you're walking meditation, then you should just, like, like sitting meditation, you should not move, move your arms around. You should place your arms in front, uh, your hands in front of your, in front of your, of your stomach, of your body, and walk back and forth, back and forth. This is the, the recommended posture while we do walking meditation. But if you want to do some exercise, you can do that on a different time. And so that separate them. Don't, don't, don't mix them together. Because then it will make look like you're mocking your practice instead of being respectful of your practice. See, practice is considered uh, uh, respecting the Dhamma, the teaching of the Buddha. So you want to do it in a way that looks respectable, not... Uh, I will. I, I I get the point. I will definitely use my own wisdom and not practicing in certain ways when there are other people that yeah, can see me. That's right. But if if you want to do exercise, you can do that yeah. mindfully. Yeah, yeah, mindfully. But don't don't do them while you do walking meditation. Mm -hmm. You should separate them. If you want to do yoga, you want to exercise. And swing your arms or anything, you can do it separately. Don't do why you do walking meditation. And um, I was just reading before uh, these uh, four uh, aggregates of the mind. And uh, I just wanted to ask you, when is it, what, by my meditation, by which of these four aggregates do we actually train? And uh, is the chain broken with the last part, with the last aggregates, the one that uh, react? I want more, I don't want that. Well, see, the four uh, nama, the four mental aggregates, they come in group, they come together. They don't come separately, see. So they, they work in, in, in unison, each one doing different function. First, the vijnana aggregate is the one that receives the information from the senses, from the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body, so that the mind will know what it is seeing or hearing. This is the working of the vijnana aggregate, or, or translated as consciousness aggregate. Once the mind receives the information, then it processes this information with sanya. Sanya meaning memory or perception. 
it will try to identify the the picture that it sees, the sound that it hears. Who is this person? What is this sound? You know, this is the working of sanya aggregate, uh, translated as perception or memory. Once you know that the picture or the sound, whether they are something you like or something you dislike, you will have feeling arises, vetana. Vetana, they will give you the feeling. If you perceive something you like, then you say, ah, oh, you feel good. Right? If you perceive something you don't like, you feel bad. So you have vetana, the, the three different vetana. Uh, good feeling, bad feeling, or neutral feeling. See? Then once you have feeling, then the, the fourth aggregate will come into action, sankhara, mm. the volition, your thinking. Then you start to think, what should I do with this information that I get? If you like the information, you say, okay, you will move toward that information. You, want, you would want to be close to that information. Like if you see somebody you like, then you want to be close to that person. So you tell the body, let's move to that person. Go closer. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't like that person, then your thought will say, oh, it's better to stay away from that person. So they work together very quickly. They're like computer, you know. They're, they're instantly they are working. This is just a matter of just dissecting. But when they work, they work so fast. Yeah. But the, what you have to be careful of is the, the fourth one. Mm -hmm. The other three is almost, you cannot change them. Yeah. But the fourth one you can change. Say, for instance, if you see something you dislike and you want to do something bad toward that thing, you can still stop. You see, if, you, if you know that doing something bad toward that thing is not good for you, then you can stop your sankhara, your thought. And the, the, the thing that can stop your thought is mindfulness. So this is the reason why we, we practice mindfulness so that we will have the ability to stop our thought when it's thinking in the wrong way. Yeah. When it's, that, it's thinking in the way that will hurt, hurt us, then we stop it. Like when you, when you see something you like and you don't have money, then you, maybe I should steal it. Yeah. Then, you, then you should stop this thought because you know this is bad. The one who knows this is bad or good is, is wisdom or insight. Yeah. And this you learn from the Buddha. Yeah. When you listen to Dhamma talk, then the Buddha will tell you, uh, you have to keep the precept because keeping the precept is good for you. It will protect you from going, uh, getting yourself into trouble. Like when you want to steal something, then you say, oh, I cannot steal because it's bad for me. When I steal, I will run into trouble later on. So you have to have wisdom so that you will know what to do with the things that you uh, come into contact with. And uh, I also have a, another question regarding the path to liberation. Let's say there are, if, if the Buddhist way is not good for any, anyone, for everyone, do you think there is a, another way? Like, uh, what's your point of view on the There's only one Tantra way? way There's example? only one way for, for, for the cessation of suffering. That's the way of the Four Noble Truths. No other way. What's your thought regard on the Tantra taught by Osho? For That's example? only Samadhi. It's only halfway. It's only halfway. Concentration of the mind. So you stop your, your mental volition temporarily, but you cannot stop it forever. You cannot stop your desire forever. But if you have which, if you have the four noble truths, then you can stop your 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 desire forever because you will know that your desire is not good for you. Do, do you ever uh, uh, think about yourself in five years' time, ten years' time, or? Uh... Yes, I know I will die. <laughs> I think of it all the time, every day. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not five years' time, maybe tomorrow. So I don't look at five years time, I look moment for moment. And the next moment I could be dead if I stop breathing 
as soon as I stop breathing, I'm dead. Thinking like this makes life very short, makes life easy. You don't have to worry about anything because you can stop breathing anytime. Once you stop breathing, then there's nothing you have to, to do. So the Buddha taught us to think of, of stop breathing. He said, just think of it every moment. When you breathe out and you don't breathe in, you die. When you breathe in and you don't breathe out, you die. So keep thinking like this. This is all you want to know about the future. Nothing more than that. Because if you know, you know more than that, it will only cause you worries and anxiety, restlessness and agitation. But if you think, I can, I can, be, dead, I can be dead any time, then you will, you will have no worries. Because you will not cling to anything. You, would want, you wouldn't want to have anything. Because you know, you, you might not get it if you die before you, you want it. So it's better just, just to be happy here and now. Once you're happy here and now, then you don't have to worry about tomorrow. This morning I was asked to come and uh, help uh, during the arms round. And I was happily surprised that you were also there. And uh, uh, it was a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. And I was wondering, uh, what's your uh, daily routine? Your daily routine, but I don't, I don't dare to ask private questions. So I just <laughs> let, let, it, let out the curiosity. Well, you see me two times in the morning. Once in the morning when I go to collect food, and then in the afternoon I come and talk to you. And the rest of the other time I just, uh, I just uh, look after my mind and my body make sure that they are safe and sound, not causing any trouble for myself or other people. So most of the time I just sit or sleep. That's the best action. You don't hurt nobody by sleeping or, or sitting. You know. Is there any, any plan to uh, welcome uh, nuns over here? Maybe yeah. Keeping the distance, I don't know, but uh, having uh, given them everybody's welcome here, but they can only come here just to to learn, but not to live because we don't have facilities to to support mm. nuns you know, or yeah. women. We only have facility for men mm. and monks. Yeah, yeah that that was uh, what I meant. Sorry, As if you, if there was a plan to create this facility so that uh, uh, one day nuns could uh, there are benefit. other places who. Well, they have the facilities. So this, this thing sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. So we, we go, go by the, the natural way. If it should happen, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. We don't have any plans. If somebody come and offer me land and build facilities for none, maybe it will happen. If nobody offer me anything, then I would not go and look for them. You know. I let them come naturally. If they come, okay. If they don't come, okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Is that all for today? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I enjoy to come here uh, during your talk, although I don't understand. Uh -huh. I, I read uh, your Dhamma talks in the books, so I think it's the same. Okay. And uh, this morning, I, when I woke up at <laughs> 1.30 a.m., Instead of going back to sleep, I sit down and meditate. So if it was thanks, to, if it was your power, I thank you for that. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it. Okay. Thank I you. Hope you enjoy your stay here. Yes, it's a, I, I, it's a very good opportunity to practice seriously. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I will uh, I stay here and for another 15 days or okay. a bit less. All right. Okay. Thank you. Give back to the lady behind you. Okay. Any time you have questions, you can come by here. Usually, it's about three o'clock. After three o'clock, we'll, we'll have the discussion session. <laughs>